Hi friends, Robert here from Diverse Apples. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Thank you to those of you who have been leaving comments. Uh, it's good to receive feedback for the, um, for the videos that we're showing. Today, uh, we're looking at a piece of material from Andamooka. This is in fact taken from a painted lady. Um, I've had this piece for quite some time actually, and, and as always, it has to find the right time in which to process it. And today um, we're going to be processing it. We can see on the stone there are some dirt, some patches of dirt which we will be taking out with uh, carving tools. Uh, this means that the stone won't be a, a completely domed cabochon, but in fact will be a, a carved piece. So I, I really like the patterns and the colours in it. Uh, from different angles we're getting these beautiful um, shades of red and orange and green and gold and blue and uh, I'm hoping that as a, as a final piece it will be showing some beautiful colour. Not just are there, are there sections of dirt in the surface here but there's actually dirt inside so I have to be careful about how far I grind down. And I'm going to hold this up to the side of the light because uh, normally when we're checking stones for dirt or inclusions or fractures, okay. we need to hold the, the opal up against the rim of the light. Um, the light uh, produces um, a lighting that transfers through the stone and allows us to see the dark patches in the opal. Um, this is a, a common method that Opal cutters will use to determine if there are fractures or dirt or inclusions in the opal. So now we've determined that there is dirt here on the surface, there's dirt inside the stone, and we just have to be careful uh, trying not to go any deeper than perhaps taking these three spots out. So what we'll do now is we will uh, start with our coarse uh, sintered diamond burr, and um, we will use this uh, to take off as much of this dirt as quickly as possible and as usual I'm going to be working dry so I'm using a mask. A bit deeper than I anticipated. I'm just going to use a brush to take away the evidence of any loose um, silica or opal and uh, we can see there's still a little bit of dis a little bit of way to go to try and get these uh, black uh, sections of dirt out. Um, hopefully we don't have to go too far to, to do that. Yes, what I want to do is to just even out the edges of this dip. The dip is actually quite a bit deeper than I had anticipated. Um, so it's not just a sharp dip into the hole. Um, we want to make it uh, smooth and gradual if we can. And hopefully we're not losing too much material or valuable colour. So we're still trying to take this out. It's a bit deeper than I thought. I'm finished with the coarse grade. Um, and I'm going to use the medium grade now to go all over the surface of the stone because we want the same type of finish all over the stone to be able to go to the con to the following grades of, of fineness. So I'm now going to move on to the stages where I use my rubberized abrasives and, and as I've made mention recently uh, I've decided to start using uh, petroleum jelly um, as a form of lubricant. Um, I'm still not 100% sure whether or not it makes that much difference, but um, it uh, certainly makes the stone look better in between grades. But uh, um, I'll be using uh, three grades of um, rubberized abrasives today. And they'll be coarse, medium and fine. So um, we'll uh, set about doing that in a moment. 
um, the surface of the stone is contoured and as I've said previously I've done this to try and um, keep as much of the um, uh, material as possible and um, this is uh, my coarse um, rubberized abrasive and we will start work with this now. Okay, we've finished with our rubberized abrasives and uh, now the, the next stage will be to, I'm going to use 1200 uh, diamond paste. Um, I, I guess I could skip a stage but I really want a nice finish on the stone so I'm not going to take any chances and I'm going to start out with this 1200 to try and iron out any blemishes that perhaps may be in the stone. I want this, I want this stone to really glow so I've just finished doing 3000 um, and I was just contemplating as to how many grades I'll actually do. I'm going to skip over the, the, the 8000 and I'll, I'll go to 14000. And, uh, and then on to 50,000. We'll see um, how much difference it makes. I think, I think the results will be quite good. Well, we're back from the workshop. This is the final result that we have from the work that we put into this, this stone. It probably hasn't really changed that much from the very beginning. Uh, we've ended up with a highly polished stone, something a little bit smaller. And I guess the, the dilemma comes to mind as to whether or not it would have been better to cut it into a cabochon or two. Um, we've gone through the process of cutting and polishing it as a carving. Uh, taking out the dirt. I was hoping for better colour um, but I don't think we've really achieved much more than what we started out with and this is the dilemma that sometimes we face. So um, this is the way it's turned out. Um, let me know your thoughts. Um, welcome your comments. Hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Uh, I'm Robert for Diverse Opals. Thank you for watching. And I'll be using 